Hello everyone, welcome to another easy Excel tutorial. Uh, I know it's been several months since my last video. I've gotten extremely busy. Uh, since then I've started a new job as a software manager at another college. Um, um, this tutorial I've planned for a while but didn't really have the time to do this. I have a few days off so I thought I'd quickly make a video, a few minutes video of uh, showing you what the differences between relative and absolute referencing. Uh, because a lot of people have issues understanding what these are. When I've done these Excel workshops uh, at my previous job, a lot of people had difficulty trying to grasp what these two mean. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, I have two sets of data here. So we're just going to do the relative referencing first. Uh, let's not even look at absolute referencing for now. Uh, the way to explain relative referencing is uh, what I usually do is let's say you're driving a car down the rows. Your row number here is relative to where you are here. Your cell number changes relative to where you are in the rows. Right? That example usually works with um, a lot of people who drive. So they see that they're driving, they see street numbers, and they change based on where they are. So let's do a little formula. Let's do 3 times 10 equals to A3 times, which is the asterisk, 10, B3. You get 30. Remember the autofill. It's something that we will use a lot. It's 4 times 20 is 80, 150, 240, 350, 480, 630, 800, yes. Let's look at the formula bar here. If you look here, it says A3 plus B3. So if we go down once, the relative references change and it's now A4 and B4 and then A5, B5. As you can see the row number changes. Right now it's only relative to which row it's on. It can also be relative to which column it's on but we didn't do it that way. But it's the exact same concept. And if you go all the way down to 800 it's A10 times B10. So again it's relative. So as you're driving down the rows it's relative to where you are in the rows. So your cell number changes. Right now it's C6. Does that work for everyone? If you have questions about relative referencing, you can always ask in the comments section. Now let's get to absolute referencing. Absolute. The word absolute means constant. Doesn't change. I'm sure you've heard of uh, absolute zero. And I've set up uh, seven numbers here, eight numbers here, uh, from three to ten, with ten here. Here we multiplied by ten, twenty, all the way to eighty. Here we're multiplying by just ten. So that means that the ten here is unchanging. It does not change. This value is absolute. But let's do it the relative way. We will do E3 times E4, e F3, sorry, 30. Take it down and it goes to 100. 10 times 10 is 100. Yep. 6 times 10 is 60, 7 times 10, etc. But this is a ways to use relative referencing. Let's say this number has to change to a 15. Yeah, this number changes, but all of these have to change to 15. And that's not always efficient. So let's do this. Let's get rid of all of these. Let's get rid of these formulas. And let's do equals to 3 times. 10. But we want this 10 to be absolute. We want the 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know, E10 to multiply by F3 no matter where we are. So what you can do is you can put the dollar sign in front of it. Whoops. Let me say again. Dollar sign. This dollar sign in front of the column number, the column letter and the row number makes it absolute. You can also do when you click F3, click F4, function 4 on your keyboard. F4. Should be right above the 4 and 5 keys. Once you do that, it'll put the dollar signs for you. So once you press enter, it's 30. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I go down? It's going to be 40. Right. So if you hover over this, you can see the relative referencing to the first part of the formula changed. E4. But as you can see, 
the F3 stays the same because of the dollar signs. Now if I fill all the way to the bottom, as you can see, the absolute referencing of F3 changed. It remained the same even though the relative referencing of the first part of the formula stayed the same, so it's 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 etc. So now if you want to change this value to let's say 15 you can and they all change. Easy right? So if the number is something is a static value like this you should always use after the referencing rather than using 15 all the way down or 10 all the way down. So you can do 100 they all change. If you have 8 rows like this it's not a big deal you can do it one by one but if you have let's say 1500 rows you don't want to mess with it that way. It's better to just have one number so if anything goes wrong you can just change that one number. Absolute referencing also works across in columns, in uh, rows if you were doing it that way. But in this example I didn't. Um, absolute referencing also works where you just want a certain column rather than or a certain row. Uh, let's do a quick Demo. Let me show you what I mean. Scroll that over. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we'll do so let's do this. It equals to I. You know, there's no formula, it's just saying that it equals to I. Right? Let's say the I is going to stay the same. So we're just going to put dollar sign in front of the I. But the 3 will change. So if I take this over, 3 and 3, right? But if I take it down, what do you think the number is going to be? Let's do 1. It should be 4, 4, 4. Right? See, because the I changed here, it's I4, I4. Rather than, if I didn't do it the absolute referencing way, look what would happen. Equals to this. See the re the reference has changed. It becomes instead of becoming I, it goes I5 to J5 to K5, whereas here it stays I4, I4, I4. So no matter how far you go, it'll always be I4, and no matter how far you go here, it'll always change L5, M5. The same thing happens if you want to just do the the rows. It's the same concept. So um, I hope this little eight minute um tutorial on relative versus absolute referencing is helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, you are more than free to ask. I hope this wasn't too confusing. It's pretty straightforward once you get the use of it. Um, if you want to know how to, you know, a certain example of when to use absolute referencing is, let's say you're working in a financial firm and the tax rate is always, let's say, 10%, you know, equals to this times this, right? But you need relative referencing, absolute referencing, so it's 30, so the tax is 30 to 100. So if I change this to 20, the numbers change, if I change this to 50, the numbers change. Easy. Uh, thanks for watching, remember to visit uh, easyprogramming.net. Uh, thanks for watching, remember to subscribe, and hopefully my next video won't be too far off.